Okay, I'm on. You guys good? Hey, Amen. You loving this weather? Oh, man. I was saying, please let some cool weather come to Florida, Lord, please. And so we just praying. We hope it camps out for a little bit. Amen. God, we get so excited about wearing our sweaters and, and boots. <laughs> I was thinking today when I was getting dressed, you know, I had gone out, and I just saw the sun, so I was thinking it was a little warmer, you know. But when I went out, I had taken my shirt. I said, oh, my God, it's a little cooler. But I really wanted to put on boots today. But I had already gotten dressed, you know, and left. I, I just wanted to pull up my boots like this. You wearing them for me? You look so cute. And Pam with her little hair. Amen. God is so amazing. And so tonight, before I get into the word, Pastor Billy was talking about this incredible family that have come all the way down. You know, they've been traveling. They're just missionaries. They just go all around the world. We met them from... Um, um, apostle, Dr. Um, don't tell me, Harvath. I always get him confused. Harfoot, Harfoot, Harvath, um, out of Chicago. And um, we went to the Philippines. And um, there were so many things that took place. So many people got saved. So many lives were changed with Dr. Um, Harvath. And so they are all the way down. And we can't let them go back without sharing. We had a talk the other night. And you guys got to come. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Corrine, I know you got something to share. I wanted you to share with them the story you were talking about, that guy who was 21 days, who, the fire, and something that took place. He was sharing with me at the table the other night. Okay, and then I know Cameron has a word, and you know you got a word, right? She's looking at me like, oh, my God. Come on, Corrine, I want you to share that. I want you to share before we. Darren, you little fireball, you, 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 don't you want to come and say hi to the people? Let me get a mic, honey. Oh, you have one? Oh, okay. Hi. Come on, this is Darren, and this is his wife, Corrine, and they're just so awesome, and I love them so much. And tell them a little bit. Tell them, okay, they don't know. They don't know. We knew you were here at one time. Um, you shared need. the story about the boys, and some of you guys got the book about the story of the miracle, what God did with the boys, with their two boys um, there. There was a real miracle God performed for yeah. them. And, and tell, tell, let's, let's catch the family up. Um, you know what? Man, this could take all night. Hope you all pack a <laughs> lunch or supper or something, snacks or something <laughs> like that. No, I won't tie up your time. I just appreciate, one, is just being able to come in here and just be able to worship. And I'm, I, I, this is it. That when this gets released, that there's things in this room. And I'm telling you, supernatural healings just come upon you. Thank I'm telling you, you right Lord. now. That's what happens when testimonies are released. They get released in the atmosphere. Yes. And then that That's light it. or that of of those healings get released into the people. And it don't even always have to be a laying on hands, you know. But I am a I am one of those that like laying on the hands, I'm telling you. And there's some out there that I like to lay on the fivefold. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm just, just kidding. I don't do that. We we gently, we gently lay our hands on them and, and then watch the Holy Ghost work. Uh, so, <laughs> so we were able to, we, we just thank you guys for just being able to come down and just worship again. Uh, but it was probably about, it was three and a half years ago that my boys were healed. And uh, what happened was, because I'm going to bring you guys into the, just a certain part because then my wife can take over. And by the way, this is my wife, Corrine. Yay! Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> for all that don't know, then I got my son, Cameron. My daughter Riley, my son Kate Cameron, uh, Kate and Cameron, <laughs> and then Madison. How do I mess up names of my own kids? But I did. So it's praise God. So what happened was was that uh, it is it was about a year and a half ago that we ended up getting a phone call to go down to Missouri, and uh, uh, there was a uh, some kind of a meeting going on down there. We were actually asked to come down and share the testimony for it, and. Uh, we get down there, and it's a whole week-long process. It was very powerful. Um, but we didn't know this guy. We didn't know this guy that owns this ranch down there. And uh, the part of it is is that he had a fire down there, and, and many people come in and go into this altar, and their fire you can throw wood on a fire, and you can just pray, and you can just seek the Father at an altar. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it's powerful stuff, man. And sometimes people don't leave. Sometimes people just fall out in the spirit, not in the fire, but outside the fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But and, and some people are there for days. I'm just saying. Some people have just left there for days. They do get taken care of, though. They just make sure they're taken care of. You know, they ain't just left and left, you know. Um, but anyway, we went there. 
And uh, we, in our spirit, we were like, all right, we were supposed to release this in this building. And in our spirit, we were like, man, Lord, do something different tonight because we just didn't feel like releasing this testimony this night. They actually said I was stuck with it because nobody else wanted to say anything. Oh, man, <laughs> And I we said, did what? It. They all just put on my lap. Like, no, it's you. I'm not saying a word. We so. didn't throw her under the bus, but it may Close. have felt like that that Close. night, you know. And uh, we didn't feel it. None of my kids felt it that night. And there was a reason for that. There really was. Um, we didn't know it at that moment. Um, but long story short, it, the, during the process of the boys um, in their healing, the Lord had brought me to the scripture of Genesis 22, 2. And it talks about where Abraham had took Isaac upon the mountain to sacrifice him. Well, at that moment in time, we were going through all this stuff. You know, it was the, the Lord spiritually wanted me to release the boys to them, to him. So there was a sacrifice there because I couldn't hold on to him any longer. But he says, I want your boys. And so we had to be obedient. And, and I'm not real quick all the time to be obedient. Amen. I'm better today than I was yesterday. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, <laughs> I'm getting quicker ears to hear the spirit in my eyes. I'm telling you what, I can see him and I can hear him quicker today. Yes. Hallelujah. Wow. And uh, so we ended up getting there. And you know what? They had schedules. I mean, these people flew out of town, kind of like when you guys came up to Road to Glory, you know? Mm -hmm. People were scheduled to speak. Mm -hmm. There's like four or five people, and then we were one of the last ones to come in on the, on the backside and, and give a testimony. And the Holy Spirit broke out in there, and not a person spoke. I'm mm -hmm. talking, phew. Mm. I can feel the Holy Spirit come on me now. Mm. Wow. Oh, she got a lot of because people were in wheelchairs and just getting up out the wheelchairs and just running across the front. I'm telling you, of, of that altar that was up there, I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit, when God steps in, when the glory of God steps in, there ain't much you got to do. I mean, you just stand there and just soak it in. I'm telling you right now, he'll do everything. Man, I tell you, and that night, man, that night, and we, we're so relieved that, Lord, I'm glad you took over. Because we didn't feel it in our spirit, man, to even release it. Well, then the next day came. We, were thought, we thought we was off the hook, but we weren't off the hook. They said, hey, we want you to release this testimony on Saturday. They put up a big tent at the bottom of the hill on his ranch, okay, on his ranch. I don't know, maybe see two, three, four hundred people is what he was saying. And uh, we are to release that. So we was like, all right, well, we better prepare. A little bit, but the, you know, in my spirit is if you just stay ready, you never got to get ready. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. you just you just do you Amen. just stay in the word all the time, Amen. and all of a sudden, at any given moment, just like maybe like right now, because we weren't planning on giving <laughs> anything, but when when people just call you out, you just ready to give You're it. And, ready. and this should be easy because it's our testimony, you know. Yeah. But you know what? It ain't easy. I'm telling you, we get up here. It, it's it's different to speak in front of a bunch of people that you don't really know. You don't even yeah. know. You know. Uh, so it is different, but praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit just kind of gives us a peace. And anyway, uh, man, what happened was was that we were able to release that on, on the ranch, at the bottom of this ranch. And uh, the ranch, you want to talk? You want to give the the detail quick? Yeah. Better have her give the detail, and then I'm going to tie it in at the end. The gentleman that owns the ranch, he's like in his 60s, and... Um, we met him through Prophet Fred Aguilar from um, Missouri, I believe, mm -hmm. or Indiana, mm -hmm. Indiana. And Dad called us down, and it just happened to be when Madison was on fall break for school, and we were all just able to be there. And so we went down, and we agreed that we would give the testimony of the boys. And um, those of you that don't know, they had a rare liver disease, and they were on be deathbed, and they weren't supposed to live till. Uh, past age 13, and Cameron is 16 today. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. hallelujah. And there was less than 100 um, people with this disease in the world when they were diagnosed. And um, four and a half years ago, they were miraculously healed. Yes, or hallelujah. three and a half years ago, in January of 2014. And there's no signs of the disease. They, been, they were released from the doctor a year Praise later. So, hallelujah. 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 So, um, in the time hallelujah. of when 
what background did you want me to get of the of the ranch or just of the boys on the 13th? Right? Yeah, you, you oh, yeah. Okay, so in 2013 of October, so this is like, it's 17, so four years ago during October, during the feast, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, during the feast time, yeah. That's when the doctors told us in 2013 that we had to spend as much time with the boys as possible because they weren't going to make it. Caden, he had a feeding tube. Cameron, he had cirrhosis of the liver. Mm. And um, they weren't doing very well. So in that moment is when Darren had gotten the scripture in Genesis 22-2, and he had told me, and I refused to receive the word. Because as any mom knows, they don't want to give their babies up right? Um, so it took me a couple months to give them up. So I gave them up at the altar of the Lord, and that's, that's when right. they were healed. That's right. that's because right. when you give things up to the Lord, let him have control and trust him for the answer. You know, his answers are always better than ours. You have to trust him for his plan. His plans are far above our plans. We never know. We may think something's better for us, but he always knows best. That's right. So if you, we just, I just gave them up, not knowing what the outcome would be. And I just said, Lord, if you take them, I'm going to praise you. And if you heal them, I'm going to praise you. And in that moment, in an audible voice, I heard him say, now that I have control, I'm going to heal your wow, boys. Come on. Come on. And that evening, Hallelujah. he healed the boys. <laughs> Woo! So... Obedience is better than sacrifice, yeah. right? Hallelujah. Right. So in that moment, um, during that October to January, we were fighting and fighting and spending as much time with the boys and as a family fighting through um, almost like we were planning for their death, but knowing that I wasn't going to settle for that. Mm -hmm. You That's know, right, mm -hmm. you didn't want to settle for that, so you were come just on. searching and searching and searching, you know, mm -hmm. endless days, you know. So as we were praying and seeking the Father, during October 13 to January 14, the boys were healed. And then in March, it sounds strange, but where the boys were healed is an hour and a half from our home. So we go to church in Rochelle, Illinois, and we live in Clinton, Iowa. So we drive an hour and a half. Where they were healed, the <laughs> Lord told right. us right. to start going there. Amen. And That's so we right. transitioned from our church and got the blessing, and then um, we started going there. So in March, the Lord told us to take the fire from that place and bring it into our city Come on. and start depositing things in our city. So we opened up our home because we didn't have a build we, we don't have a building. So we opened up our house and started inviting the community into our home. And so we brought the fire from that city into our city. Oh, and I'm not going to go into that detail, but so many miracles have happened. That's right. Just in our community because of that. That's right. So to tie this in, so the, the place in Missouri, um, we've never met this guy. Never. But we, when we went down there, we finally met him for the first time. Last year. Last year. So at the same time that we found out to spend as much time with the boys as we can, to the time that they were healed, and then we started things out of our own home. This guy, the Lord had told him to start a fire on the altar that he had built. And the Lord told him, whatever you do, do not let this fire go out until I tell you to let it go out. Now, and this ran, and it rained. He was telling me there's just, because in Missouri you get a lot of rain, uh, and he had a lot of rain that time in, in, around this area in this time. And what happened was one night he went up there, and this wood was just soaked. He said the Lord, he told the Lord, he said, Lord, don't you blame me. <laughs> he, this is what he said. Don't you blame me for your rain putting out your fire. <laughs> but the Lord said to him, son, don't you know that my wood will burn wet? That's in the scripture. Come on. Don't you know that my wood will burn wet? He took, he said, yes, sir. He took that wood. He took a piece of wood. He was telling me about it. And he said this thing was just dripping wet. I mean, just soaked. I mean, water just running off this thing. When he threw it on that fire, that thing hit that flame. And when it hit that flame, it engulfed. I mean, it just went up 
as if the log has been soaked in diesel fuel. I mean, it lit up. He, it moved him back is what he was telling me. When he threw it on, it was so big that it threw him back. I'm telling you, and God says, don't you know that my wood that's wet will burn. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 So he did that. And he kept going. And he kept burning. And let me tell you this. For three, every three hours, my wife had to get up to feed the kids. Every three hours through the day. Every three hours throughout the night. Okay? The same time that this gentleman down in Missouri had to get up every three hours and throw wood on that fire to keep that fire going. Now, I'm telling you, this is lining up. Now, little did we know that this guy had started at the same time that my boys got healed. He started the fire the same time my boys, or I'm sorry, the same time that my boys were told, we were told that they didn't have much time to live, to spend as much time with them as we can, right? That's when he started. That's when we were getting the bad news. But the Lord told him to start a fire. My the Lord had God. given me the scripture in Genesis 22 too. My I want God. your boys. Yes. Yes. You bring the sacrifice. This is, hey, come on. Jesus yes. said this. You bring the sacrifice because I got the altar. I've got the fire burning for you. Yes. My God. We get up there. And this guy ended up saying at the same time that he quit that fire was the same time that we had started our thing in our home, that the boys were healed. The and boys were healed. He was burning. Hold on. Check this out. It adds up. 222 days. That lines up with Genesis 22 too. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm not a mathematical genius, but I tell you what, I can't put that together. You know what I'm saying? But God's timing. Hey, he says obedience. This is what he was saying. That guy's obedience, you never know. You never know. When the Lord tells you to do something, you just do it. Because you don't know what's on the other end. Hallelujah. Oh, she cut it on my mouth. You never know. There's a life at stake on the other end. I'm telling you that right now. It's life or death. And that day was life that was brought into my boys. The Lord had breathed breath back into them. I'm telling you right now. And did nothing. He didn't hold nothing back. He didn't say, I'm just going to heal part of them. He didn't say none of that. He said, I'm going to heal them from the time they were born until they go. Hallelujah. She quoted on my mama. They're healed. They're healed. Hallelujah. And that's just a snippet. I'm telling you right now. But just be obedient to the Lord. I'm telling you, you just don't know what's on the other side. There's one more. One more catch. It take two minutes. I'm telling you right now. Watch this. Do you want to share this one? Part of it. She got, she got some more to add. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that all the dates and all the times lined up, you know, just to check, right? And so we go back. That was October. So we go back last December. They invited us to their home. And as we go to their home and we go over the notes, and it's everything lines up perfectly perfectly the date the time every time he was getting up to feed the fire so it wouldn't die i was getting up to do blood work and feed the boys so they wouldn't die same parallel it was amazing <laughs> so so as all this took place i just kept on asking the lord so what what do you what are you saying and he said i'm always working behind the scenes you don't know what he's doing you don't know. So what we see in the natural, there's always something in the supernatural underneath making things happen in the Hallelujah. natural. We don't know. You never know. But he's got your back. He's got you covered. Right? So then when, during that time, they asked us to go to the altar and, and have communion with, with him and his wife. So we did. And now you can take over. Man, oh man. So little did he know that what he was doing wasn't just for my boys. That he was burning wood on that altar for a healing that was going to come forth in his own body. 
This man has had to have orthopedic shoes all his life. If he took his shoes off in this room right here alone, even with this carpet, his feet would hurt so bad that he'd have to sit down. I mean, it's just, he, he was telling us, it would hurt so bad, it would just almost put him in tears if he walked on anything. And let me tell you, so he said, hey, will, you, will your kids pray over me? Come on. Man, my kids got it. We were at that altar, and we had communion, and little man, all of a sudden, the kids had laid hands on him. <laughs> laid hands on him. He said, I felt something in my feet. He felt something in his feet. I think it was some heat. And he got up, and he was able to dance around. He said, I feel my feet just feeling fine right now. He took, got to his house, took his shoes off. Let me tell you, took his shoes off and started dancing and running around in his house on some tile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He got his own healing through his own wood. On this fire, and let me tell you this too, because this is pretty awesome. So in the Bible, it talks about that Mount, Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah. This ranch is called Moriah Ranch. You saw it. Moriah Ranch. Moriah Ranch. Moriah Ranch. Hallelujah. Moriah Ranch, man. We can't line that up. We didn't even know anything about it. But I, I'm telling you what I encourage you. I'll encourage you, because when we got all this stuff, man, the Lord changed our hearts, man, and put us, set us on fire, set us on fire for him, and there ain't no turning back, and I'm telling you right now, the Lord says, and I asked the Lord, Lord, why did you allow this to happen, and this is what he told me, he says, I'm telling you what, he says, I allowed this to happen, because he says, if I can get the man of the house, I'm going to have the whole house. She cut it up, I'm telling you men, I'm telling you men, whoo, she cut it up, stand up, stand up and take your place in this place, in this place, if you got family, if you got family, if you got children, I'm telling you now, start leading them into the things of Christ, start laying hands on them and start prophesying, whoo, she cut it up, I'm telling you now. Your life will change. Your house will change. Everything around you will change. And it will not go back the same. Hallelujah. 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 Set a Hallelujah. fire in your house. Ooh, well, we right before you, right before you go sit down. Um, I, the, the presence of God is here. Come on, dear. The anointing of God is here. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I don't know, but I, I just feel God. And I think that where you are right now, we need to pray for our children. We need to get our young people in here. I don't know what you may be dealing with with your kids, but God has been speaking to me about the children so much because he's raising up such an incredible, I'm telling you, this generation that has been marked for these end times, God is going to use. And we have some kids in here tonight. I want every child can you get them for me? Can you get them for me? I, I want you to lay hands on them. I want you to declare the word of the Lord over our children. Because I believe God is getting ready to cause a fire. I believe a fire revival is hitting. And I believe it's going to hit this house and it's going to do something even over our kids. Come on, guys. I want y'all to pray. Cameron, y'all come. Y'all lay hands. I want you to lay hands. Come on. I want all of the young people. I just want you to walk by. And I want you guys to lay hands over all of our young Come on, come this way. Come this way. We're going to just get a line going from this way. And then what you're going to do, you're going to walk by. They're going to lay hands on you. Okay? Okay. So we're going to just walk by. And then each one of y'all just, just lay hands on our children and declare the word of the Lord over our children. Come on, get in line. We're going this way. One line. One line. They're going to come by. They're going to walk straight by. And then when you walk by, you guys can go walk out to your seats, wherever you came from. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just decree and declare, Father God. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fire on their lives. Fire on their lives. Fire, Father God. And Healing over our children. 
Generation of warriors. 
everything you got. You are not to carry no more burdens. Carry his fire. He'll carry your burdens. He's going to release his fire upon you. You lay your burdens at his feet. Confess him as Lord and Savior of your life. Tell him he, he has everything. You give him everything. Everything. Let, don't hang on to nothing. Hang on to him. Hang on to him and his promise he has for you. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you for all those bondages that are, are pulling you down. It's time to receive the joy and the fire of the Lord into your life. Just receive the fire right now. Just receive the fire. Thank him and praise him for his fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for touching all the people, Lord. Thank you for touching your people, Father. Now we send the word to you that are watching on Facebook. You may not have been able to be here tonight wherever you are. The word of God is coming tonight. God is causing a revival fire to hit the homes of the believers, the saints of God, those who are called of God. Your children are coming out of this season. And we send the word of God to bring divine healing, to bring wholeness, I'm telling you, to come against all the um, contention that's happening in their lives where the enemy is pulling at them. We snatch them out of hell and we call our kids back into the things of God. Come on, back into righteousness. We say our kids belong to the Lord. Come on. And I want you to know this. I hear the Lord say, especially during this time in the season, that the enemy sacrificed children. He said, I want you to speak a word out of this house tonight that we begin to build a hedge of protection around our children, all around the city of Deerfield, all around the state of Florida, all around our region. But we send the word of God to where you are. And we ask that you come in agreement tonight for the protection of the Lord to cover our children during this season. And we bind the God of Mole. We say none of our kids will be sacrificed. None of our kids will be given up to the things of darkness. We say no more, Father God. So we go into the realms of the spirit and we snatch back our children. We come against every fiery God of the enemy. We bind the spirits of molestation. We come against spirits of abuse. We bind it off of them, spirits of rejection. We come against, Father God, their sexual orientation that is being disturbed by demons of darkness. We decree and declare they are the righteousness of God, created in the image and the likeness of you, Father God. And we call our kids forth. We say, Father God, even now in this season, we say now they rise up and become even greater than what they've ever been. I just need somebody to pray with me. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for their schooling. We pray for their education. We pray for money's being released. We encourage them, Father God, in the daily walks of their lives. We come against oppression, depression. We bind spirits of heaviness. We come against it, Father. We bind suicide. We come against every dark spirit that is lurking around their lives during this season. We break the cycle. We break the cycle. We break the cycle of the bands of darkness. And Father, we say you're setting them on a new course. You're breaking them into a new cycle, a cycle in a season of enlargement. Huge, oh God, mega. Father, we say our kids are rising up and they're knowing who they are. They are in this hour and they will not be silent. So Father, we thank you that the child right now that are feeling confused, that are feeling lonely, that is off by themselves in isolation, that is filled with abandonment and rejection. We snatch those kids back into the beloved. Father, we ask that you go into every foster care. Come on. We speak to the kids in foster care programs. Father, those right now that are wars of the state, those whose families are dysfunctional, Father God, and they feel like giving up. Those kids that are cutting themselves because the pain in their lives is so severe. Those kids right now that are sitting in the midst of pain and abuse. Father, snatch them, oh God. Go down and reach them where they are. We say they shall not be lost, but they should be gathered for such a time. 
the communication networks and channels. We send help, Father God. We thank you for leaders and mentors and teachers. We send everybody. The community is getting involved to rescue our children, oh God. And we thank you, Father God, for the kids in Israel. We call them, Father, out of whorehouses. We call them off drugs. We call our children, Father God, out of every addictive behavior that is in their house, in their lives. We call them out of schizophrenic behaviors. We call them out of medicine, medication, where they are giving them drugs, Father God, to help alter their behavior. Father, we say the word of God goes to those kids right now, Lord God, and that you set a plan of rescuing, bringing them out. We go into the hospitals. Come on, let's walk in the spirit. Robo ta 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 ya. We walk into the hospital right now. Joe DiMaggio, we go into every children's hospital. We walk the children's wards. Those right now, come on, Robo Saka, that are dealing with cancer. Some of you may even be dealing with some of the issues you heard, that God brought miracles to the children that are here tonight. The intestinal um, issues, Father God, that are causing them to have diseases. But Father, we say you are the healer. And so Father, we say walk the halls of every hospital. God, reverse, cancel the assignment from hell to snatch these kids out before their time. Their voice is needed in this generation. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are resurrecting them out of sick beds. Oh, God, where they have been, Father, battling. We curse cancer. We curse it at its root. We come against the plague of cancer. Father, this is the month where people are celebrating, bringing cancer awareness, and we call this spirit out. And we say, no longer will you be a threat. No longer will you come against the body of Christ. No longer will you attack our children. No longer will you attack our women. No longer will you come against our husbands and our fathers and sons and daughters. But Father, we say tonight that we have been given victory. Come on tonight over every cancer. We thank you that you download and infuse us, Father God, with new sales. We prophesy over the children of the nation. We prophesy over every family. Come on. Speak the word of God over yourself, over your family. Father, we say we are the hold of you. We are the redeemed of Christ Jesus. Father, we say that the portion of healing you say is the children's portion. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you're bringing supernatural miracles, healings, and breakthroughs, oh God. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let the miracle fire burn. Let it not go out to every child that's healed. Let it not go out to every child that's delivered. Let it not go out to families that set free. Let it not go out, Father God, until the cries of your people are heard and you're pouring out miracles, blessings, protection, provision. Father, we thank you. Let the fire burn until the altars are built back in the households of the praise. Let the fires burn, oh God, until every witch, until every warlock, until every false god, until every veil worship is down in the household of faith. Let the fires burn tonight, Lord God. Let the fires burn, Father God, until there is a holy generation of righteous people that rise up with the fire of God in them to declare the word of God back over the earth. Let the fires of the altars burn, Father God, until purity and holiness and righteousness comes back upon the people to be established in the household of faith. Let the fires burn, Father, until our communities change, until the social injustice, oh God, is been dealt with. Let the fires burn, Father God, until you tear down divisions, schisms, and isms among us and bring us into the place of love. Let the fires burn, Father God, until every priest and every king and every royal ruler come into their rightful place. Let the fire burn, oh God, until the fivefold ministry become one, apostolically one, to do the works, oh God, that you call us to do. Father, make us one. Draw us together. I wish we could pray. We build an altar, an altar unto you. We build an altar of fire in here tonight. We say, let the fire burn. Let it not go out. Let it remain, Father God. Let healing break out. Let miracles take place. In these days of 120, where we're building a glory house, God, cover this place and fill it with your presence. Fill it with your presence. Fill it with your presence. Now, can we just for a few moments before we leave out of here? I wasn't praying for people to watch me. I wasn't praying for it to be a spectating show. I wasn't praying because I wanted all of you to look at me and try to figure out what's going to happen next. 
I was praying because until we open up our mouth in the earth, until we create a sound that can come out of the earth, that God has given us authority over the earth. And until we open up our mouth and release a cry, until we open up our mouth, the Bible says that God allowed the children of Israel to even go through some of the things they suffered in until there was such a righteous indignation. God is waiting for a sound to come up out of his people. You can't think this away. You got to open up your mouth. You can't meditate this away. You can't read all the books and keep it in your head. But he said, whatsoever you bound on earth should be bound. And whatsoever you loose on earth, it should be loose. I heard the testimony tonight said this. The testimony tonight said this. He, she said, until she came to the place where she was ready to release these kids unto the Lord. Nothing, no miracle. I want to say this to you tonight. Until you are ready. Uh, until you're ready. People all the time say, well, what is God? We're waiting on God. No, God's waiting on you. No, he's, he's waiting on, I say God's waiting on you. Until you get sick and tired. I, I'm not talking about church antics. I'm not talking about how many times you come to church. I'm talking about one move of faith. One decision. to say, I'm going to let it all go. Because as long as you play in God, you don't need God. As long as she felt she can take care of them and she's going to keep her kids and she's going to make sure they're better and she's going to rock them in her arms and she's going to, what God is saying, well, as long as you got them, you don't need me. And tonight, whatever you're dealing with tonight, as long as you are holding on to it through fear, as long as you are rocking it, come on, through worry and doubt, as long as you are sitting there rehearsing in your mind the report that is not of God, as long as you meditate on the report from hell, as long as you keep playing it over and over and over and over, the enemy is gaining victory in your life. But it only takes one decision tonight to put it on the fire and the altar of God. Let it burn. Let it burn. God is saying it's time to let things go. You can no longer do this in your own strength. You can't do this. It is killing our joy. It's taking our peace. We don't have any type of light that is shining for people in the darkness to draw to us because we just don't believe what God said he'll do. But tonight, tonight, I challenge you to make a decision. The one that Corrine made when her babies were told they were getting ready to go and, and celebrate. You know, you know, God has been saying to us, death is not over. Death is just the beginning of life. And until some things die, until the work, the Bible says, until the seed goes into the earth and die, die, it can be no harvest. And what you don't understand, every time you've had to say bye to a loved one, every time you had to release somebody to go into the seed of the earth to die, don't you know it's part of your harvest? Don't you know that you got harvest in the ground? Don't you know that if they're in Christ Jesus, the Bible talks about the saints, those who are saved in Christ? Come on, they live forever. Don't you know that as long as there is a seed in the ground, that is a part of your legacy and your genealogy. Don't you know that there is a harvest you can always go back to the Lord for and say, God, but I got a seed in the ground. I don't know if you may have lost your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your sister, your brother, but I'm telling you tonight that we can just let things go and let the breath of God, let it burn on the altars of God and let the breath of God breathe on us afresh. There is a fresh fire. There is a wind. There is something God is doing. And what I love tonight, Darren, when you said the water on the wood, the water, the wood was wet, but the fire of God kept burning. The wood was wet. We know in the natural elements when water shows up, it quenches fire. But when you step into the glory, water becomes what God begins to move upon. And that's why when Elijah came and he began to call down fire and the water began... <laughs> The Bible says they had the water. And he told them, he said, I'm going to call on my God. Y'all call on y'all God. Well, Elijah, what's the name of your God? My God's name is the God who keeps burning and drink water. My God is the God that water can't put the fire out from. My God is a consuming fire. My God is the fire that burns and he quenches and take off everything. When he takes off the drought, when he burns up everything in your life, when he removes everything from you, 
That is in the name of my God. And as God showed up that day on the mount, and he began to, begin to demonstrate his power, he wanted them to see that there was a separation that was taking place of who's on God's side and who's on the opposite side. But tonight I say to you, even before we leave out of this place, even the prayers that was prayed for our young people, even the things they are struggling in, where they're struggling in so many things. But tonight, as we get serious before Lord, I know some of our kids walk through the line, but tonight we got to let some things go in our hearts. Tonight we're going to have to let some things burn on the altar of God. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to hear God. Because you got to let husbands go, and husbands got to let wives go. And husbands and wives got to let their children go. And all the offenses, um, spiritual offenses we've gotten because we simply have not understood the process of God to destiny. Because the process of God is to destiny is chaos. The process of God to destiny is what you don't understand. God is doing, he's releasing. And if he's going to release, we got to let go. That means that you can't hold on to what you've had and be able to receive what God is bringing to you. So that means that there has to be a law that comes into effect that God is trying to get you to understand. Because God is moving supernaturally, so powerfully, and it's going to happen so quick. As soon as you say, Father, not my will, your will be done. As soon as you out of your heart, not out of your head, not with this little thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. But when you're in your heart, say, God, I trust you to take this. I trust you to handle this. I trust you, God. I can't do this. I can't go on like this. But I trust you tonight to give you this situation. I want you to close your eyes and see it before the Lord. Just, just see it. Just, just see it. Just see whatever that is. I don't care if it's bills. I don't care if it's a job. I don't care if it's a boss. I don't, I don't care if it's the children, the spouse, the in-laws. I don't even care if it's your church leaders. It's time for us to let the things go that have became tumors in our lives, blood suckers that have been quenching our own fire and stopping us from being whole, stopping us from walking in the great destiny God has for us. Father, we let it go. You are God, and there is nothing too big for you. And so God, tonight in our hearts, come on in our hearts, the heart, the heart meaning the mind of the heart, things that I've locked into my heart. My mind can go on laughing and taking on the daily stuff and hearing stories and going on. But in my heart, there are blockages. And it's called mind and my heart to not be in agreement. Because there's a thought of the head, but then there's a thought of the heart. And it's the thoughts of the hearts that are binding us. It's the offenses that we have put in our hearts that we can't seem to let go, move on, release people, release places, release situations, release the children, release the bills, release the job, release it. Because if he's our God, then he's able to cause everything that you cause to give up to bring gain. He wants to bless your life. And so, Father, tonight, we see it. We look at it. Come on. We take it and we, I don't care how big it is, we press it in. We press it down. It's not bigger than our God. Our God is above every circumstance. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what you're facing. Right, hear me. Please hear me. Please, let's just close our eyes. We got to go in the supernatural. We got to go in the spirit to see what God is saying. We shut down the voices and the sound of the enemy. We come against every disturbing thought. We cast down vain imaginations. We come against imageries that is not from heaven. And Father, we say we have the mind of Christ Jesus. God, we believe you can do it. And even if we see it tomorrow, we still know you've done it. After we pray, we know it's done. So Father, tonight we thank you for every prayer that was even prayed, every place we came in agreement, every place they laid hands. Father God, every place that we came for, everything that we're asking you for even now, even the issues, even the things that have been blocking and preventing, oh God, and stopping. Father, we crush it. We bring it down. It's under our feet. It's not bigger than you. And so tonight we cast our cares. Come on. We put these things on the altars of fire. And we give it to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, that you're breaking us out, our homes out, our marriages out. There is a new expression coming out of our lives. It's going to look like you, full of joy, full of peace, full of righteousness. Oh, it's going to have holiness in it, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you, Father God, that it will lack nothing or need anything because it will be living by the Spirit. So we pray that you heal our minds, heal our hearts, heal our marriages, 
heal our children. Father, we call our kids. Father, you say not one shall be lost. They may not be present with us, and they may be working out their testimony, but God, they shall live and serve you. We call our seed holy. We call our seed righteous. We call our seed saved. Father, we'll not move out what we see, but we decree and declare that inside of them there's a birthing and a making of God. And we call the righteousness and the righteous standard of God in their lives, no matter how old they are. They're our children. And so, Father, we thank you that you're redeeming time. And you're breaking every curse and every soul tie off of their lives. And we pray, Father, if even in our marriages, make us one. Join us closer. Let us be, Father God, covenantly connected, standing in right places and righteousness with you. Father, we say, Father, that you draw us into the same thoughts, that our minds become one, that we operate and maneuver in and out of each other to do the will and the work of you in the earth. Thank you for proper covenant understanding. Bring us out of the relationships that we've been in that have been adulterous, that have been full of fornication in you, that have caused us to go to other gods and submit to other things, the things that you've already told us belong to us. Help us to be satisfied and completely content in where we are and what you've given us for now. As we break through, Father God, and believe you for what is next, let us not be murmurs nor complainers. Drive out the sound from around our lives that are driving the right things from us. And Father, we say our lives are filled with expectation tonight. We say we are beacons of light and hope. We are cities set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. We thank you that we are the light towers that people are looking for. We say they can't wait to meet us. They're running us down to negotiate, to do business with us. They're bypassing hundreds of companies just to get to us. Father, we thank you that you are supernaturally sending butlers in our lives in this season who will open doors to us, oh God, and bring us, oh God, into the next expected place. Father, so we bind discouragement. We come against the enemy's thoughts that are trying to make us feel nothing is happening when everything is happening. Father, we thank you that we let go of the dead things, the dead places, the dead ways. And we come into this new place. We're alive in you. And we thank you for this day. And so we bless you for new relationships. Come on. New relationships. New circles of influence. Come on. Woo. New circles of influence, oh God. New circles of influence. Come on, see yourself outside of this. See yourself in your next moment, in your next season. Ruling and reigning from another dimension. See yourself. Father, we thank you that we are the ones. No longer are we just in need of healing, but we become the ones that are the healers. Use our hands to lay hands on the sick and let them be raised from their sick bays. Let us now, Father, be used as those that will go, not just to be healed, but we are the healers. Go, Father God, and declare darkness and death to be gone. We go, Father God, and prophesy the word of the Lord to those that are without hope, and we bring hope. So, Father, we thank you for the supernatural healing power that is operating through our lives. Come on for a few seconds. We're building 40 days of prayer. We got to learn how to pray and stay engaged long enough and talk to God till we finish the whole thought of what God wants to get accomplished in the earth. So, Father, we thank you that spirits of depression go off of your people. Go out of our homes. I command the spirit of depression to go off of your life. The spirit of heaviness leave tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for your spirit of peace, for the spirit of joy that rests upon our lives and over our hearts. Yes, Lord. Come on for a few seconds, yes, bring in the Lord. Holy Ghost. Come on, let's seal it. Robo sakarate deshe kete deya. Rendele bros ke deshe kete busiya. Rara 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 deya songura buso te deya. Bring in the Holy Ghost. This is our heavenly language. For everyone that don't know what this is and think it is strange and think it sound crazy, when we come to Christ and get saved, what He gives us is our original tongues, our original language. It is not the language of the earth where we learn from our cultures. It is a communication channel that brings us straight back to God. It is our spiritual language that we got from our Father. And every time we practice it, every time we do it, we are making a direct connection back to heaven. It prays beyond our mind. It prays beyond the circumstances. But it gives us direct access to the frequency of heaven. We begin to tap into God, and then we let his will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. So, Father, tonight, we don't speak what we think or what we feel. 
but we thank you for the testimony. We thank you for coming through here, Father, to do what you wanted to do tonight. We thank you for the word of God that's been spoken and laid in its place, the testimony of fire, the testimony of healing, the testimony of breakthrough, Father God, the testimony, Father God, of the turnaround, the testimony, Father God, that you laid in this house tonight to give us hope and faith, to know that you're the God of the breakthrough. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of creative miracles. Father, you create organs. You renounce every sickness and every plan of the enemy, every diagnosis that the earth has said. There is a remedy from heaven that's coming to overrule what every person in the earth has spoken concerning our lives. We thank you that it's being overruled right now by heaven's agenda. And we say things are being lined up, set into place, oh God, according to your will for our lives. And we bless you, Lord God, tonight. We thank you for the victory tonight. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for the victory tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you for victory in our house, in our lives, in our minds, in our hearts. We believe you, Lord, and we thank you, Father, and we give you honor and praise. Now listen, thank you guys so, so much. Can you guys just really praise God and thank God for the show? Am I saying it right? Shout, shout, shoot. That's how you pronounce your name? Okay, I would have never got that. Skirt, skirt, sturt, the sturts. I would have never got that. But the sturts, please thank God for the sturts. They are so awesome. You laughing at me, Cameron? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love y'all. I love you. I love you, Pastor Bill, and I love you. Hallelujah. We love you. Thank you. Just um, stretch your hands thank towards you. them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Listen, I want you to stretch your hands. This is a family of God. And as you stretch your hand, the same thing that God has done for you and your family, how he's been there for you and blessed you, and you know what I mean? What you know of God for your family that he's done for you, stretch it back to them. <laughs> Give it all to them. Release it to them. Amen. Right now, in Jesus Christ's name, Father, all that you've done for us and our families, our, our, my wife, my children, for me, my family, in many situations, Father, we extend that grace and that favor and that mega blessing upon all of them. And the ministry that you've given them, the ministry of healing, Father, oh God, and even reconciliation in these last days, as you've used them tonight here, continue to expand them, Father, yes, enlarge their territory. Yes, God, continue to do miracles, Father, through all of their lives. In Jesus Christ's name. And Father, let the grace of God and let your peace rest upon them all. That pass of all understanding. Your glory, Father, your glory rest. Shekinah. Shekinah. God, just touch your neighbor and say the glory of God be upon you the glory of God be upon in a greater dimension. That's what the glory represents. Yeah. That's why Habakkuk 2.14 for this church, an end time church, a glory church, is 
the knowledge of God's glory shall cover the earth as the waves cover the sea. And they're going to know God's glory through the works that you do as you allow the Holy Spirit work through you and the glory that's on you, not in the Ark of the Covenant. You carry that presence. You are the Ark, Lord. Keep yourself holy unto the Lord. He loves you. your neighbor and say, give in this glory atmosphere, a glory, a glory seed. Now I want everyone just receive for your children tonight. It's done. God is moving. And all the young people, I want you to believe for your friends that when they come around you, that you're going you're gonna to make a difference in their life. They're going to feel the presence of God around your life. Amen. Young people. God wants to work through your lives. Let him do it, amen. Let him touch your friends. Change their lives. We need a revival through you young people, amen. You 10-year-olds, you 13-year-olds, you 15, 16. We need you to get on fire for God and not be ashamed of his name and be ready to pray for people, amen. Tell them the word of God. Give them a testimony of what's happened in church, what you've seen, or what he's done in your family's life. Just get on, get on fire. Get radical. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, the presence of the Lord is in this place. The glory of God. Facebook Live. We just want to thank you for staying with us. And I'm sure you were blessed by the testimony, amen, of the search family and just what God has done here. I'm sure. And as, as Prophetess was praying, I'm sure you reached out in the spirit and you were touched. And I want you to do this go and give. Give to this church and what God is doing here, amen. Go to jpproclaim.org and you can click on um, give and you can get there at the website. Or you can download our, our app, amen, and give there at the Google and the Apple store. You can download JP Proclaims app, and you can go ahead and give there. But more importantly, continue to pray. Continue to pray over your children. God, move tonight and raise your children up like the Sturge family did. They raised their children up, and they're leading the way amongst their children. I mean, amongst their peers. They're praying for people, and they're not afraid, amen? Because they know who Jesus is. They know him personally. So continue to train up your children in the way in which they're to go, which is the way of Jesus, so that they can do what you do. Amen. And I pray that you guys are doing it as parents. We do. We do here. Amen. Come on, you guys are ready to give. Stand to your feet all over this place. I want you to just give God a big thank you shout. A big thank you like God. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Woo! <laughs> yes! Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. 
We thank you that we have seed to give. And, and tonight as we give, we give willingly, cheerfully, and thankfully, Father. And we put it in tonight with a big appreciation for you supplying our needs. Even when we didn't have expected, Father, you sent it. So we thank you tonight for the miracle money, the unexpected money, as well as the monies that we've earned through the jobs that you've given us. We receive it all tonight, and we give back to you what you've asked. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Come on, when you put it in, shout, Miracle Harvest. Come on, shout, Miracle Harvest. Shout it out. Yeah, shout it out. Yeah, that's it. Hey. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Come on and stand to your feet all over this place. Miracle Harvest. Come on, shout it out back there. Miracle Harvest, I see you. <laughs> Amen. Close your eyes all over this place. Father, we thank you that we could be here again. And we, we just honor you. We came to honor you. And we thank you for your men and women, Father. Tonight, Prophet Cynthia. Tonight.